thought I'd come back at you here with a real quick episode. Solo style here. Uh, and this will be kind of the intro to the episode. So I found out that there is a book that just released a couple months ago called Garbage Pail Kids Origin by Dynamite Comics. And that's what I'm going to review for you today. It'll be the first issue of that series, just because I wanted to see what it was like. And hey, you know, you can listen to this podcast, make your own decisions uh, as to whether it's something you want to pick up. But before we get into that, I'd kind of like to talk a little bit about Garbage Pail Kids, what they are, what they meant to me. So if you've never heard of Garbage Pail Kids, these were Topps sticker card sets that came out starting in 1985. Now, there was 15 different series of these. Now, if you have ever heard of Wacky Packages, apparently the origin of Garbage Pail Kids was a sticker that never made it into the Wacky Packages series. The concept was a take on the Cabbage Patch dolls. I'm going to try to describe the card to you, but if you get a chance, go on to the internet and pull this image up. So the Wacky Packages card was of a boxed Cabbage Patch doll, but inside the box is a kid, put that in quotes, coming out of a trash can. And down below it says Garbage Pail Kid. It's clearly a take on the Cabbage Patch Kids that were all the craze at that time. But the card never actually made it into the Wacky Packages set. However, the people at Tops were like, this is a great concept. Let's do a whole series of these cards and see how it does. So that's when they started producing the Garbage Pail Kids sticker cards. And like I said, it started out in 85. Uh, in 87, there was actually a movie that came out in theaters. At that time, I'm, it, was, it would have been tough for me to get into a theater. I couldn't, I don't think I could convince my parents to go watch this. So that was 87. I was just getting out of Garbage Pail Kids at that time. I wasn't collecting as many, but the movie intrigued me. I was like, how could this be? How could, how could this actually be something? And I've never seen it to this day. Um, I'll mention this in the upcoming coverage that I've already recorded on the book. I have watched the 2017 documentary, 30 Years of Garbage, the Garbage Pail Kids story. And that actually involves one of the artists that's in this book, Jeff Zapata. Now, personally... You know, I can't recall the exact moment that I got into Garbage Pail Kids. I knew they had existed, and I think it was right around Series 3. So that puts it at about January of 86 when the third series drops. I know that I'm heavily into collecting by the fourth series, which from what I saw, I think had released very shortly after that. They released 15 series of cards from 1985 to 1988. Uh, so that'd be, what, five series a year? If you're starting in 85, going all the way to the end of 88, maybe? I don't know, but four or five series a year. These cards were hitting the market pretty quickly. But yeah, so third series, I think, is when I start to realize they're out there. And the first series was, even at my age of eight or nine years old, I knew of the rarity of like a first series and second series card. They were kind of hard to come by. And I've always, I, you know, I can remember back then wanting to get a hold of some of those early series, but you couldn't find them. And if you did hear about them, they were usually talked about like they were some kind of holy grail. It wasn't lost on me that the more rare a card was, this was true in baseball cards football cards, basketball cards as well, the more rare that card was, the more money it was going to be worth. So I knew that at that age. So again, if you've never collected Garbage Pail Kids and didn't know what they were, like I said, they're a parody of Cabbage Patch Kids and a sticker card set, but they were over the top, like gross and nasty. Uh, they had on the flip side of them, they had Sometimes they had comics. Sometimes they had a goofy thing like a wanted poster. They would also have a puzzle that you could put together with the backs of some of these cards. That just spoke to me. It felt kind of anti-authority. It felt like, oh my goodness, should I have these? Oh, look at this. Look what's happening on this card. And there was a lot of people who were against Garbage Pail Kids and how offensive some of them could potentially be. Speaking of offensive, there is one that I gave to a friend of mine named Ty, and it's a Garbage Pail Kid from 
Well, it's 181B. That's the number up in the top right called Necktie. And he actually asked me for the card. I can't remember. I think he either asked me for it or I had it and I gave it to him. I can't remember. Either way, he ended up with it. He played in a band and he put it on his guitar. The picture is of a Garbage Pail Kid hanging himself. He's levitating in the air. He's got a noose around his neck. He has the end of the rope in his hand. So he's essentially hanging himself. So, you know, a definite example of the potential offensive nature of some of these cards. So let me get back to, you know, when I first started collecting. So this is uh, third series releases January of 86. I'm about seven years old at that point in time. I have faint memories of finding these things at the gas station within walking distance of where I lived. We lived in, in an apartment. It was just me and my mom. It was probably like a year or two. We lived in this small apartment. There was a gas station within walking distance. Now, I didn't walk down there by myself, but, you know, mom would stop by there frequently, and I would go down there with her, obviously. And I'm pretty sure either at the counter or on one of the shelves sat a box full of Garbage Pail Kids, 25 cents a piece. And I can remember picking them up there. The other place I would usually pick these up at was KB Toys. It was KB Toys in the mall. Going to the mall was a big thing. Number one, it was about a half hour away. So it was rare that we left to go there unless it was some kind of special occasion. We wanted to go shopping for something. The mall had a couple of really cool things when you were a kid in the 80s. And that was the arcade and KB Toys. I distinctly remember going in there and buying plenty of 25 cent packages of Garbage Pail Kids. Over at uh, GPK.com, I, I was kind of looking through the series, the 15 series that are there. I didn't collect all the way to the end. I stopped at some point. So I was trying to gauge where it was. And from what I can see, I think I stopped getting cards around Series 9. And that really isn't too long when you're looking at the length of collecting something. Because Series 9 hits June of 1987. So I'm only collecting these things for, what, a year and a half? And then what ends up happening is a year and a half later from June of 1987, December of 1988 is when the last series gets released. So at that time, I'm out of the game. I don't know. I, I, I looked at GPK.com, and I didn't recognize too many of those cards at all from that point forward. And like I said, it was kind of rare that I traded these things off. That was a, one thing about my childhood at school that I never really did. There wasn't a time where we would come in there with a bunch of cards and start swapping them with people. We wouldn't trade. At least I wouldn't. I didn't participate in it, and I don't think I saw it either. It was just more along the lines of like, hey, I've got these cards, check them out. And I don't even know if I did that very often. I know we talked about them at school, but I don't recall trading these things at all. So I hoarded my stuff. You know, I was always, for some reason, one of these kids that was very aware about the collectability of things, keeping them and hoping they'll be worth something someday. Clearly now as an adult, I recognize and realize the futility of trying to collect something like that in order for it to be worth something. It's kind of rare. You got to get your hands on the right thing at the right time. But I'm hoarding these things and I'm keeping them for myself. Uh, the only other one that I can think I almost gave out to somebody or gave to somebody was I mentioned Ty. I gave him a sticker. I gave or at least I brought out to give one of our friends who used to smoke. She doesn't now. She's she stopped smoking a long time ago. But her name is Ashley. And I was going to give her a card 231A. I'll look this up. Don't think I'm doing this off the top of my head. 231A, Ashley Trey, which is a Garbage Pail Kid uh, who is just sitting on a dresser by a phone. And their mouth is wide open with a little couple, a couple little notches where cigarette could sit. Ashley Trey. So pretty gross. But uh, I, I've still got a box down here somewhere. It's full of fourth through seventh series Garbage Pail Kids. I haven't brought them out and looked at them in ages. But if you owned any boxes that held basketball cards, football cards, Garbage Pail Kids, whatever, you know the size of box I'm talking about here. Not the real long one. It's more of a short box full of uh, Garbage Pail Kids. And on the top, I wrote in pen, Garbage Pail Kids. Anyway, so there's kind of my history with this product with Garbage Pail Kids. At some point, I want to cover the ash can that Jordan Lowe gave me, uh, our buddy from Kapow, the Pop Cultured Podcast. He set aside the ash can for Mad Balls. It's Garbage Pail Kids versus Mad Balls. I want to cover that. It may very well be the next thing that I cover on this show. But until then, 
let's go ahead and listen as I discuss what I'm reading in Garbage Pail Kids Origins from Dynamite Comics. Here we go. Take a card, any card. You'll probably wish you hadn't. Terry Drinkwater explains that American children these days are obsessed with the whole disgusting deck. The wonderful folks who brought us baseball cards, tributes to the excellence of genuine heroes, the idols of generations of young Americans, now bring us Acne Amy, Tommy Gunn, Bad Breath Seth, Slain Wayne, and the rest of what are called the Garbage Pail Kids. Among the preteen set, they are really hot. I like two garbage pail kids. Yeah. The manufacturer won't release sales figures, but so many youngsters have become so obsessed that the cards have been banned by some school principals from the West Coast to the East. Simply said, if you have them, fine, keep them home. Monday morning, I don't want to see them in school. You can't even play with them at recess time. Mm -hmm. What are you supposed to do, just sit there? I mean, really. <laughs> I'll trade you slain away for bad Brad. Or a rare Claude Dwayne for a hard-to-find furry friend. I think they're icky and gross. Some of the things on them are a little bit disgusting. It looks sort of like a swamp monster, but it's from the sewer. And it's known as Sewer Sue. I think it's disgusting. Dead Fred. He's dead. And there's blood splattered on the ground. That's violent, or, or is it? It's violent, but... It's just like, it, it's like cartoony. Do you know anybody disgusting like that in real life? <laughs> I think they do give ch kids a chance to let off steam together in a not inappropriate way, to be kind of anti-social and anti-conventional in a way that doesn't really hurt too badly. I'll trade you uh, Harry, Harry for Messy Tessie. I already have Messy Tessie. Okay. Parents and educators think that this whole garbage pail thing will soon pass. Sorry, do you want to try? They think. Terry Drinkwater, CBS News, Santa Monica. Please don't ask me what it all means. Stand rather, we'll see you here again Monday. Good night. One thing you should always do is check to make sure that you are recording. I just spent 40 minutes looking this issue over, talking the whole time while I was going through it. All the little revelations and everything that happened are now gone. Actually, we're just never recorded in the first place. That's okay. That's all right. I've read the issue. Normally, I like to read these issues and do that real time while I'm talking and then just condense it down. Not going to happen this time, folks, because I did that already and recorded but didn't record. But anyway. Let's talk about Garbage Pail Kids Origins, number one, all right? So first thing I want to point out here is this is a Dynamite comic. The creative team here is Adam Goldberg of Goldberg's fame. So if you watch ABC and you've heard of the Goldbergs, half-hour sitcom that's on there, pretty funny stuff. Uh, at least the first few seasons are. It's getting a little long in the tooth now, but uh, fully entrenched in the 80s, and it's a, it's a good show. Hans Rodionoff and Jeff Zapata. Those three guys are contributing to the story here. Art direction by Jeff Zapata. Written by Adam Goldberg and Hans Rodionoff. Pencils by Jeff Zapata. Inks and finishes by Chris Meeks. Colors by Daniel Contoy. Letters by Seda Temafonte. So this came out September of 2022, I believe. I haven't had a second issue yet, but... Garbage Pail Kids is, is something I grew up with for a few years. You know, I was collecting those things left and right. Uh, so I wanted to see how this, this issue how this issue went. Uh, there's some, some great covers here. Our first cover is by Ray Lago, which is very interesting. You know, we got a Garbage Pail Kid uh, getting a bomb put into his head by this lab assistant. Uh, and this general looking on with his clenched fists, you know, waiting to make sure that this experiment is a success. Uh, very strange, you know. When I think Garbage Pail Kids, I'm wondering to myself, like, are we, how in the world do you make this work as a comic book? Uh, and as we find out, it, they definitely do a decent attempt here. So anyway, this first cover has an x-ray in the background of this poor kid's head, has a big hole in it. I don't know what they're doing, but they're placing a bomb in this kid's head. How is this going to work? It looks very real, like very realistic, except for the Garbage Pail Kid looking person on the table strapped down uh, but the other characters look very much realistic then our second cover is by tom bunk which is a garbage pail kid artist y you would recognize it immediately it's very grotesque art 
uh, very much in the vein of like you know of of Garbage Pail Kids. You have the Atom Bomb who is awake in this one, who's not under anesthesia. The other cover he was out. Uh, this one he's perfectly awake. His head is like flipped up, open like a jar, and they're lowering a bomb into his head. Very gross stuff going on here. Like the lab assistant who now has this large brain above their head or on top of their head is holding this saw that's covered in blood. There's blood all over the place, splatters of blood on this apron. Adam's brain is in the uh, trash can. There's just like nasty litter and green splotches all over the place, green splotches on the wall. It's yeah, it's very grotesque. Our third cover here that I'm looking at has Adam Bomb with his head exploding, just kind of like the card, except there's stuff coming out of his hands. Now, at this point, I'm like, oh, okay. So, is he going to have superpowers? This art's by Jeff Zapata. He's going to be our main artist for the book. But, yeah, right now, looking at this, you're thinking there is a possibility that this kid is going to have superpowers. And then our fourth cover that we're looking at, classic, classic, Atom Bomb from the Garbage Pail Kids series. All right, so if, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, it's a kid in a little suit with a tie, has a, uh, a little box in his hand, a little remote in his hand, and he's pressing the button, and his head is exploding with a large mushroom cloud coming out of it. That is Atom Bomb. Or the, the B side of that was Blasted Billy. <laughs> One thing to remember is Atom Bomb was the eighth card in the first series of Garbage Pail Kids. He's also the 8A of that series. 8B is Blasted Billy. It's something that I just picked up on. As we go through this story, Adam has a twin, which makes this whole AB stuff pretty interesting, uh, because every single Garbage Pail Kid had a double that was a different version, a different named version of the character. So Adam Bomb had a different named version of, called Blasted Billy. So that was the AA was Adam Bomb, 8B was Blasted Billy. Uh, so every other version of the Garbage Pail Kids that you'd seen in these series had an A and a B. We open this up with a large aerial battle. Uh, the title of the story is I Don't Give a Damn, A-D-A-M. Uh, get it? But there's this large aerial battle. Up at the top it said 1945, but the font I noticed was very, very similar to the video game 1942 that came out in the 80s. Uh, and if you go to the 1942 video game, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Look at the font. It's very similar. Those lines that are coming down through the 9 and the 5, that's what's going on here. I assume that was on purpose. I don't know. Maybe they were looking at, they were referencing something else for those, uh, for that font style. But interesting, uh, I thought when I first seen it. But so we have this large aerial battle as this, they open this comic up. There's this general, general, general Samuels, who's di directing this pilot named Major Bomb to drop this bomb. Uh, his name is Major Bomb, B-A-U-M. He's about to drop a bomb onto this bunker, but he can't do it because he's come under fire. Heavy fire. Uh, it, it, the plane is going down. So he's unable to drop the bomb. Before he crash lands, he's yelling at the general to find his twin brother, Adam. Yes, Adam Bomb and tell him, and then he crashes. So he doesn't get the chance to tell the general what to say to his brother. We find out from a, I don't know what you would call him, an airman, an, an airman at the, at the hangar that a lot of the problems they're running into dropping these bombs are the bombs are too heavy. So this plane cannot drop this bomb. They need to figure out a way to get this thing across enemy lines. And that's when Dr. Brainsfeld shows up. A pretty young doctor who has this thought of some type of experiment that she says falls within a morally gray area. One thing to point out here is the art style of this book is very much a comic book art style. The, the figures, the people that we are seeing so far are all very realistic, right? Something you'd find in a Marvel comic. It's interesting to see that and think to yourself, okay, how are they going to work the Garbage Pail Kids into this? That's one of the things that always stuck out to me is like, you can't have the Garbage Pail Kids in a universe like ours because of their disfigurements. That's not the right word. Because of the way they are. Because of their um, appearance. You just It just doesn't fit right. That's why when we had, I've never watched this just because I've heard it's so so bad. 
But I was a huge fan of the Garbage Pail Kids when they were coming out. And to hear that there was going to be a movie about the Garbage Pail Kids, I actually have it, but I've never watched it. And I think a lot of it is because there's this weird... I don't know what that word would be. It's, it's like a... It just doesn't fit. Like, seeing the Garbage Pail Kids in a live-action movie would take me out of it immediately. Because how can these people exist? Well, same thing here. You know, how can the Garbage Pail Kids exist in this universe? Well, it's Garbage Pail Kids Origins. Let's find out. So, like I said, Dr. Brainsfeld has this plan that she wants to potentially enact to try and get these bombs across the enemy lines. So our next scene, we have the military finding Atom Bomb, who is unfortunately... (laughs) Puts me in the mind of Steve Rogers before the Super Soldier Serum. He's kind of weak, but the, the news is reported that his brother has gone down behind the lines and Adam's like, alright, I'm joining up. I want to be a military man. I want to f- do my country a service and I want to find my brother. Well, he gets rejected. He's 4E. Rejected 4E, but the general goes down through like all of these symptoms that this kid has, which is just ridiculous. But the funniest part was at the end, he's like, there's also a plank of wood in your abdomen for some reason. You probably should get that looked at. And they have this x-ray, and it's just this big plank of wood with a nail in it right in his stomach. I don't understand, but whatever. (laughs) So, uh, Dr. Jane Brainsfeld shows up, and she's like, hey, look, you may not be able to do this. This is very much like a Captain America origin. You may not be able to do this, but with your current, your unfortunate physique, but... I have an experiment if you're interested. And initially, Adam's like, no, I'm not. But then he starts to think about how his brother, you know, took up for him. His twin brother took up for him in the past because he was the weak, weak one. And his brother, who was the strong one, always, always looked out for him. So now Adam's decided, yes, I want to go save Boomer, apparently is his name. So his brother's name is Boomer. Interesting. Boomer Bomb and Adam Bomb. (laughs) Adam reports to the lab. He's put under. Dr. Brainsfeld injects a radioactive serum into his body, which then turns him immediately into the physique of a garbage pail kid. The bulbous cheeks, you know, the round head, the stubby little body. So that all happens immediately. Yeah. And then it just goes off the rails as they trap door his head open and start to place a bomb. And at the end of this, she goes, behold, Adam Bomb. And there's this great one-page splash of Adam in this suit, but he's standing up. His head has got the mushroom cloud coming out of it, but he's got this radiance coming off of his hands. Now I'm starting to see what's going on here. We're going to get a superhero type, just like I was talking about on the cover, a superhero type Garbage Pail Kid. So our next scene is them taking Adam out to this testing facility so he can test out his powers and this is this got pretty cool uh because as he's walking out there he finds out that his code name is subject 8a which is corresponds with the card from garbage bill kids series one 8a was adam bomb and he goes what happened to the first seven subjects the general speaks up and says actually there were 14 because we labeled some candidates as b's which of course again matches up with the card line i started thinking well let's look at the first seven cards and see what it was like prior to adam showing up here very first garbage pail kid 1a and 1b was nasty nick and evil eddie which is the vampire garbage pail kid i don't know if you recall the the card but i'll describe it to you here real quick it's a vampire looking garbage pail kid who has a barbie doll in his arms and he looks like he's you know the classic vampire has his cape out and he's about to bite the bar it looks like he's about to bite the barbie doll second card 2a and 2b was junk food john and ray decay which was a garbage pail kid who did nothing but eat sweets and rotted his teeth his two front teeth the only two teeth that he has up chuck and heave and steven are 3a and 3b which is garbage pail kid in a diaper uh, it looks like a, you know, a baby who is doing, it, it, it's throwing up like a building block, a fish. You know, it's, it's pretty nasty. 4A and 4B are Fry and Brian and Electric Bill, which is a garbage pail kid in an electric chair. 5A and 5B are Dead Ted and J Decay, the zombie garbage pail kid. It's like a zombie coming out of a grave. Then Art Apart and Busted Bob make up 6A and 6B. This garbage pail kid is just a doll whose arms are made up of stuffing and their arms and legs are, have been torn off and laid on the ground. 
Uh, and 7A and 7B are Stormy Heather and April Showers, which is a garbage pail kid who is in the rain, has their umbrella up, but getting struck by lightning. Throw that into this universe. These first seven subjects, are they out there? Do they all have superpowers, or did they escape, or did they all die? We don't know. Dr. Brainsfeld steps in and says that it's classified. So, all right, so back to Adam Bomb testing out his powers here. The one cover that I talked about has Adam Bomb, like, it almost looks like he's doing a Hadouken from Street Fighter, where he's shooting powers out of his hands. But actually what's happening in, at least right here, when he puts his hands out, actual bombs come out of his hands. So they're, they're bombs that he can grab a hold of, uh, that he can shoot, apparently. Uh, and he litters the testing facility with bombs blowing up. Also, military equipment that shouldn't have been blown up, but they are pretty, he's pretty explosive. As he's doing this, he finally, he finally is trying to get his powers under control and stop blowing things up. Blows up a tank, an aircraft, the latrine. He finally stops. Someone comes over. This is, uh, I don't know who this is. This is like a, uh, someone below the general who plans to try and help Adam get his powers under control. But this is where Dr. Brainsfeld mentions that he has a thermonuclear warhead inside his noggin. And at that point, because he thought of it, I guess, Adam's thermonuclear warhead comes out of his head and he accidentally arms it. So now everybody's scrambling trying to figure out how to get away because he's running around with this armed thermonuclear bomb on his head. Yes. So everybody at this airfield or this testing facility is running, trying to find cover. Adam finds a trash can and jumps into it. Yes, he finds a garbage pail and hides, thinking that it may have avoided it from exploding. Unfortunately, that is not the case. It explodes. It sends all this radioactive goo all over everybody there, blowing people backwards. General Samuels is thrown into the Uncle Sam poster, the classic Uncle Sam poster, which, by the way, he very much looks like Uncle Sam, uh, but he phases into it in some weird way. The guy that was under General Samuels that was going to help Adam controls or become a soldier, his flesh falls off. Dr. Brainsfeld starts grabbing her head. This airfield attendant named Roy gets covered in this goo. And as Adam comes out of the garbage pail... He starts to see that this radioactive substance has turned these people into garbage pail kids. Now we have uh, Dr. Brainsfeld, who has this huge, bulbous brain on the top of her head. Brainy Janie from Series 1. General Samuels turns into Snooty Sam, the garbage pail kid of Uncle Sam with his finger up his nose. Snooty Sam. We get dead Ted here, the zombie garbage pail kid uh, that's i don't know what his name is but the guy that was going to that was under general samuels has turned into dead ted and roy turns into roy bot which is a garbage pail kid that was based uh that was parodying a transformer now all five of these people are kind of looking around like what just happened dr brainsfeld says we've all turned into superheroes dead ted has super strength by the way he throws a freaking tank uh roy bot turns into a toaster <laughs> I don't know how that's going to help. But, yeah. Now we have five superheroes that are all garbage pail kids, and they look to turn the tide of the war. Now, at the end of this issue, we check back in on Boomer, Adam's brother, who's been captured by somebody in Germany. This large, spooky castle. Who could it be? It's Nasty Nick, the vampire. His name in the comic is Baron Neustadter. He has Boomer strapped to this table, and it's very much like a Castle Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein deal, where he is going to experiment on this guy. Let let me read this from Baron Neustadter. Once I have transformed you into my own personal super soldier, there will be nothing to stop me from taking over the world. And Boomer refuses, to which Baron Neustadter sends in TV Stevie to hypnotize him. Now, TV Stevie was a... Garbage Pail Kid with a TV on his head and these swirly eyes hypnotizes the victim. So Baron Neustadter with dreams of world conquest. And that's how we end the first issue. I mean, I was fairly intrigued and pleased with what I read here. I mean, I I like the idea of Garbage Pail Kids actually having a superhero origin. I think this will be fun because... You can do that with so many of them. Now, there's, 
does it fit well within a superhero universe? Well, I mean, there are plenty of characters in the Marvel and DC universe that have, like, powers that are very odd. There's a lot of things that I think that they could do. When you look at the Garbage Pail Kids themselves, the cards are funny, but you could easily be like, I could work a superpower into that. Like, you look at, okay, I'm, I'm in the third series here of Garbage Pail Kids. There's a card called Marvin Gardens, a statue in a garden that's spitting water. That's silly. But let's take a spin on it. Let's just say Marvin Gardens has some type of stone-based powers, turns, can turn their skin into stone in some way. There you go. There's your superhero power. Uh, some other type of water-based power, throw that in there. I think there's, there's promise. Now, as to whether people grab onto this, man, I don't know. Garbage Pail Kids was such a... It, it's definitely something that happened in the 80s. The only people that are going to be buying this are probably people who went through that trend uh, and experienced it. But if this goes on for another... I mean, I want to see at least the conclusion of this story. So give me a four-issue series out of this. I want four issues of Garbage Pail Kids Origins. I don't know what the plan is for this story, but let it be something where the goo becomes uh, some kind of weird event that happens across the world and turns these people into these Garbage Pail Kids with these powers. And now you have like this comic book universe of super-powered Garbage Pail Kids. I like it. All right, there you go. Thanks for joining us. All of this would not be possible without W2Mnet.com, so make sure to seek them out for more podcasts. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please feel free to share, and we look forward to entertaining you again soon.